the crypto industry might be going through its own version of the 2008 financial crisis right now. While cryptocurrency users are guessing at how to recover their portfolios amid the ongoing bloodbath, scammers are aggressively attempting to jump on the hype train of the hottest topic in the market right now, the FTX and Binance drama. FTX is one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanging platforms in the world, along with the much larger Binance. FTX was heavily promoted by many trustworthy influencers and even Tom Brady. You know what? I'm in. But on the 11th of November, FTX announced that it will file for bankruptcy, with its CEO, Sam Bankman-Fried, stepping down in the wake of a trading scandal that has embroiled the firm in regulatory inquiries. Rumors even spread that the disgraced ex-CEO had fled to South America. It looks like we'll be hearing a lot from John J. Ray. He's the new FTX CEO, and he has unwound Enron and other major corporate failures. He has already become a key figure in the proceedings, and he drove headlines with a court filing on Thursday. In it, he pointed out that he has over 40 years of legal and restructuring experience, and that never in his career had he seen such a complete failure of corporate controls and such a complete absence of trustworthy financial information. It was the biggest collapse in the crypto industry. This sudden collapse is being referred to as the crypto industry's Lehman Brothers moment, a reference to the once mighty investment bank whose implosion helped spark the 2008 financial crisis. And it's not showing any signs of slowing down. But to understand how this devastating downfall of one of the crypto world's giants happened, we need to take a step back. You see, FTX was more than a crypto exchange platform, it was a darling of Wall Street, with major financial companies, sports leagues, and franchises who entered multi-million dollar contracts with the company. Those included a $135 million deal to rename the Miami Heat Stadium the FTX Arena, and an ad with NFL star Tom Brady. This election cycle, the 30-year-old CEO was the second largest Democratic donor and a major lobbying force in Washington for crypto regulation. Before this turmoil, Sam drew comparisons to J.P. Morgan for bailing out other troubled exchanges. You were called the J.P. Morgan yep. of crypto. Yep. Does that bother you or did not? It doesn't bother me too much. Sam learned to trade stocks during a short stint at trading firm Jane Street in New York before he got bored and decided to experiment with Bitcoin. He noticed the variations in the value of Bitcoin across different cryptocurrency exchanges and started arbitraging. You know, Bitcoin was trading on a lot of different crypto exchanges and it was not trading at the same price on all of them. So you might see it trading for $10,000 on Coinbase and $10,100 on Bitstamp, and you know, in theory, there's a 1% arbitrage to do their trading those against each other. All right, so you decided to more or less trade Bitcoin or other cryptos and take some arbitrage advantage, yep. and it was a profitable, I presume. Yep, it, it was. After a month of making modest profits, he got together with some college friends and started a trading business called Alameda Research, a company that will play a big role in the catastrophe. Originally, we thought this team was a bunch of geniuses in crypto. Now it's coming out they were more like a gang of kids who all dated each other. This report comes from Coindesk. Alameda employees were in romantic relationships with each other. And there's speculation that the CEO of Alameda, Caroline Ellison, became the CEO maybe because she dated Sam Bankman free. Incidentally, she also has been revealed to be a big fan of amphetamines, which is just not great when you're controlling billions of dollars. And it gets worse when you realize that SBF had secretly added a, quote, backdoor into FTX's bookkeeping system, which allowed SBF to, quote, execute commands that could alter the company's financial records without alerting other people. In other words, this is how we believe Sam moved $10 billion in funds from FTX to Alameda without alerting anyone. By January 2018, his team was making $1 million every day, and he became an official billionaire by 2021 thanks to his secondary and more high-profile business, FTX. The crypto exchange grew to be the second largest in the world and a titan of the industry, seeing $10 to $15 billion traded a day. On the other side, we've got Chang Peng Chao, the CEO of Binance, the world's largest crypto exchange and FTX's main rival. The pair were once close, and Binance made an early investment in FTX. But tensions emerged between the two as Sam lobbied Washington for more regulation, and Chao publicly objected to those efforts. Chao made his opinion clear in a tweet he made earlier in November, stating, We won't pretend to make love after divorce. We won't support people who lobby against other industry players behind their backs. A report was published later on, citing a private document that raised questions about whether FTX and Alameda Research were more interconnected than previously disclosed. Alameda reportedly had a large portion of its balance sheet tied up in an FTX-issued cryptocurrency called FTT, raising questions about whether the two companies could survive a major drop in FTT's value. 
Chao, who held a large stake in FTT, announced that Binance would sell about $530 million of FTT, depleting the value of the token and prompting FTX customers to start pulling out their investments. And despite Sam's efforts to calm customers, they withdrew some $654 million from FTX, in which point Chao announced that he was swooping in to buy out the troubled exchange before eventually pulling out of the deal. CZ, their competitor, called it a significant liquidity crunch. This basically means FTX had the money, just they didn't have it right now. Imagine I owed you cash, but only had gold. That's a liquidity crunch. I can't just give you gold, I have to go sell it first. But crucially, I have the money, it's just locked up. Now, depending on how hard it is to immediately sell, this small issue can turn into a very big one, which FTX figured out when $5 billion in withdrawals came in one day and they just didn't have the money. And so that's what this buyout was all about. But this buyout was kind of shaky at best because it was non-binding, which meant at any point, Binance could just walk away if they didn't like what they saw. And that's exactly what happened. A day later, FTX was declared bankrupt. But why does any of that matter? The possible ripple effects of the FTX collapse are pretty worrying to say the least. After Binance walked away from the buyout, Bitcoin dropped 15%, although it was on the rise not long before that. Meanwhile, scammers on Twitter saw dollar signs. They have launched a FTT token compensation program. They guarantee an immediate 1500 FTT airdrop or $4,125 to all connected wallets. They reassured everyone that each non-custodial Ethereum wallet connected to their service will receive the reward with no extra action needed. While the scammers created a very primitive website that can only lure the most gullible investors, some details of this campaign are well done. For instance, the scammy website has exactly the same name as the original FTX main domain. The redirection is organized through a built-in service. Visitors are redirected to a website with a Cyrillic domain name. And from here, things spiral even worse. Then they suddenly got hacked in addition to everything. On Telegram, their admin says, FTX has been hacked, all funds seem to be gone. FTX apps are malware, delete them. Coindesk reported that the hacker got out 600 million dollars. Authorities in the Bahamas are currently investigating potential criminal misconduct surrounding the stunning implosion of FTX. FTX's fate remains uncertain, however, which throws its high-profile marketing deals into question. The Miami Heat are less than two years into a 19-year, $135 million arena rights deal with FTX. Major League Baseball has a pact with FTX to be the league's official crypto exchange. The Golden State Warriors has its own deal for FTX to be the club's official cryptocurrency platform and NFT marketplace. There's also a very high probability that that FTX's users won't get their money back. Ken Griffin, founder and CEO of hedge fund Citadel, told the Bloomberg New Economy Forum in Singapore, FTX is one of these absolute travesties in the history of financial markets. People will lose billions of dollars collectively, and that undermines trust in all financial markets. This story is far from over, and it seems to only be getting worse for everyone involved. And the crypto industry yet again proves to be one of the most troubled industries out there that seems to attract scammers and money-hungry capitalists like a moth to a flame. Watch this video where we cover three of the biggest scams that shook the world of crypto to its core, including none other than the crypto king Gerald Cotton and the crypto queen Ruja Ignatova, and how they ripped off thousands of clueless investors and users out of billions of dollars.